Hello, Minecrafters and Redstoners. This is Tennis Likens. How are y'all doing today? And as you can tell from our screen right here, we are going to start up some Pixelmon. Now, the reason for this is I'm going to record a couple of short episodes and get them ready to post on Mondays following the current week we are on because I'm going to have to go take care of my little brother for a little while and I will be unable to make videos and I have no idea how long that's going to take. Uh, from the paperwork I've seen it's going to be about a month long that I'm going to have to stay over there with him and take care of him um, but from what he said the other day it may only be a week so I'm not really sure how much time I'm gonna have to record so we're gonna go ahead and record a couple of uh, short videos and get those uh, scheduled to come out now one of the things I love about Pixelmon is I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Pokemon uh, so we need to talk about my history with Pokemon and my history with Pokemon starts all the way back with Gen 1, the original black and white games on the Game Boy. So, with that being said, you may wonder of these three, Charmander, Squirtle, and Bulbasaur, which one was my first Pokemon? And it may be a little bit surprising to a lot of people, my first Pokemon was actually Bulbasaur. This was the very first one that I ever picked, and... It worked for a time, like getting through the first couple of gym leaders was great, but after that, uh, Bulbasaur was kind of useless, <laughs> to put it frankly. Like, he, that's about the only time that he was ever really good in the original games. And then I joined the bandwagon, and from that moment on, my starter for Gen 1 was Charmander. I absolutely love Charizard, he is like one of my favorite fire types. But with that being said, that's where I started. So where did I go with all the other ones? And which ones do I actually like is a big question. So let's talk about that a little bit. So Pokemon kind of started doing this thing for me, wherein there are certain generations that I absolutely love the design of the starters, and there are certain ones that I cannot stand them. And this pattern has persisted all the way up to Gen 8. And we're not talking about the move sets, the types, we're talking about the overall look of the Pokemon. I get that some of these Pokemon are overpowered and my hatred for them is to other people weird. My, my point is these Pokemon look terrible. Like they are absolutely atrocities in the Pokemon world. So which ones are those? So let's start off with Gen 1. Gen 1, I absolutely love Gen 1 starters. They are my favorites, though I very rarely ever use Venusaur or Blastoise. And then Gen 2. Gen 2 I also really like, and arguably these are the weakest starters in the entire series. Uh, Cyndaquil was my choice for Gen 2, though Totodile was a close second, and I really didn't care about Chikorita. It looks good, but it, again, it's a grass type. I, as, as we go through the series, you'll see that I don't really use grass at all. Really, the only coverage a grass has is water and rock. Possibly ground. I don't, off the top of my head, I don't really know. But those are three types that there's other types that can cover that and more. So I rarely ever use grass. Moving on, Gen 3, um, I hate Gen 3. Like, these are the worst design starters of all of them, in my opinion. There's a, a couple, there, there's one Gen later that may be actually worse than this, but it's kind of on the fence for me. I don't like the Gen 3 starters at all. And again, some people are probably going, wait, what? These are some of the greatest Pokemon ever. No, no, no. I'm not talking about their stats, their move pools, and everything. I'm talking about the way they look, the design of these Pokemon. And I cannot stand the Gen 3 starters. But with that being said, uh, Torchic was my starter for Gen 3. You may notice there's a fire theme going on here. And yeah, I am a fire starter, with one exception. We'll get to that. So Gen 4, Gen 4, 
I really like the Gen 4 starters. They have probably, up to this point, my favorite designs of Pokemon to date for the starters. Let's, let's keep that clear for the starters. Uh, Infernape is absolutely one of my favorite fire types next to Charizard. And Piplup, um, I, I'm not too big of a fan of Piplup, but it's the design of it looks really good. It's really cool. Uh, Turtwig is probably the only grass starter that I would potentially choose if I didn't have much of a choice in the matter. If I had to choose a grass starter, it would be Turtwig. I absolutely love this one. Moving on, we go to Gen 5, and I can't stand Gen 5. Gen 5's Pokemon are probably the the next worst on the list. Like, these are absolutely terrible. I don't like, and I don't even remember these guys' names. I don't like T-Pig. Uh, well, T-Pig itself looks good. I do not like Oshawott, and I do not like Snivy. I don't like any of these. Now, you may notice we've started a pattern. So we've got like on Gen 1, like on Gen 2, I hate Gen 3, I like Gen 4, and I hate Gen 5. Hmm. Yeah, we've got a little bit of a pattern started. So now on to Gen 6, Pokemon uh, X and Y. Uh, I, sh I should have named some of these, but, you know, I didn't. I don't know why. Finnegan. I absolutely love Finnegan. It is one of the coolest looking starters next to uh, Infernape, in my opinion. Um, unfortunately, this is where we deviate from my love of fire. Because there's one other in this set that I just absolutely have to have. If I did not, if I had a choice of only the Gen 6 starters, I would absolutely take Froakie. I love Greninja. It is one of my favorite water types in the entire game. Bonus, it has dark type. And the reason I say bonus on that is after Gen 2, when dark type was introduced, I almost always have to have a dark type on my team. That's because Psychic was so broken in Gen 1. So dark type, you're guaranteed to see me have a dark type. Even if it's just for a little while, I'm going to have a dark type. And there's several different dark types out there, but we'll, we'll get into some of my favorite ones later. But yeah, out of Gen 6, Froakie was my starter. I absolutely love this one. Chesspin, eh, he's cool, but I don't think his overall evolution line is as cool as Turtwig. I just, I absolutely love Turtwig. There's no doubt that that grass starter is one of my favorites. So from there, we go to Gen 7. And if you notice, we have started a pattern. Love, love, hate, love, hate, love. I hate to tell you guys, I hate the Gen 7 starters. So let's let's talk about these because this and Gen 3 are kind of tied for the worst designs of starters for me personally. Um, Litten, Litten is probably the... Get, get, let's, let's get this out of the way first. Cyndaquil's evolution line is kind of plain, kind of boring, but it makes sense. Litten's uh, evolution line goes from like a really cool looking cat to a luchadora. It, it, it is probably the, this is the one fire type you will never see me have. I would much rather have Torchic than Litten. I do not like Litten. Um, Poplio. The Mermaid. Okay, I can't stand this one. Uh, I This was actually my first uh, Gen 7 starter, was Puplio, simply because I was sitting there looking at him trying to decide because I was keeping it a secret to myself. I didn't want to see the evolution lines. So I wanted to see them as they evolved. And I went with Poplio because when you're sitting there at that screen waiting to pick your Pokemon, this one is the one that smiles at you. And I was like, that one. I'm taking that one. And then I got to his third evolution, and 
It, it was a dog mermaid. I can't tell you how disappointed I was with Pop Leo. Once I saw that and saw the Litten final line, I was like, no, I can't do this. So I went and grabbed Rowlet. <laughs> Rowlet's design being a kind of Robin Hood archer of these three is probably the best, but it is still terrible. Like, I do not like Rowlet at all. Now, let's move on to Gen 8, because I love these guys. Okay, so a few things. And there's a reason that I absolutely love these guys. And that's because everything that these guys are based on, and this actually started probably roughly about uh, Gen 4, where they started basing the Pokemon on certain things. And I don't remember exactly what all of these are. I know Finnegan is a witch, uh, Froki is a ninja, and then Chespin is supposed to be like a knight. And then you got like the Robin Hood type figure, you've got a mermaid, and you've got a, a wrestling. Um, so with Gen 8, we have Score Bunny, who is a soccer player. Well, you might be surprised to know that I played soccer as a kid. Or I'm, if you're in another part of the country, I'm, or country? Another part of the world, I'm sorry. I'm American. It's soccer. Uh, calling it football kind of confuses people around here because we have our own version of football. But yes, Score Bunny uh, ends up being a soccer player, and I absolutely love that. That is something I did as a child, and Score Bunny was actually my starter for uh, Pokemon Sword. Then we got Subble. Subble? I'm not sure how you say this one's name. Um, the first time I saw this one in its full evolution line, I was very confused. I was like, why do we have an emo lizard? Like, I didn't like it. And then somebody explained to me that it's actually James Bond. And I was like, okay, that makes a lot of sense. And I absolutely love James Bond. That is one of my favorite uh, fa uh, fiction action figures. I Action heroes, whatever you want to call it. I love James Bond. Great character, great idea, and I actually kind of like this starter, though this is not the one that I chose, um, mostly because of the fire thing. Like, if you hadn't noticed, we got kind of a fire affinity going on. Uh, but yeah, I like that. I really like its design. It looks great. Um, Groki. Okay, Groki's design is kind of debatable on whether or not it's good, um, but I love the idea of it, because guess what? I am a drummer. I do have my own set over in another room. Uh, I haven't sat down and played in a few years, but that's because all of our little dogs get scared when I am uh, drumming. So I haven't been able to sit down and play in a very long time. But yeah, Groki, I absolutely love. The, this, the idea of this being a drummer is just absolutely amazing. But yeah, that is my history with uh, Pokemon. And even though we don't have it here, uh, Arceus. Uh, no surprise there, I went with a Fire-type Cyndaquil, and I haven't actually gotten that far into that game. I know it's been out a while, but I just, I wasn't feeling it. Probably because I hadn't finished uh, Sword yet. I actually just last night finally beat Sword, became the champion. Uh, I had to, because in order to progress in the uh, DLCs, you gotta be the champion. So I was kind of forced to become the champion. Uh, I didn't have much of a choice in that, but, eh, I just went ahead and did it. So with that being said, being that we've got this pattern, and Gen 9 is going to come out in a couple months from now, if it follows a pattern, that means I'm not going to like the Gen 9 starters at all, unfortunately. Uh, we'll see what happens. And I'm kind of curious for you guys, who's your uh, Gen 9 starter going to be? Uh, I don't remember the names offhand, but I am kind of torn between getting the uh, the Grass Kitty Cat. No, no, the Grass Kitty Cat probably looks the best to me. Uh, the Fire Crocodile thing looks a little weird. Uh, from what I understand of what their evolution lines are going to be, the cat is going to be some kind of magician. So it's going to look similar to Finnegan, 
at its evolution line. Uh, the crocodile is going to be some form of rock star. I'm picturing kind of a Kiss-esque character look. And then the water is supposed to be some form of dancer. Uh, I don't know about that. These could be really good or they could be really bad, but yeah. I'm I'm leaning towards getting getting the uh, the grass kitty cat. Again, I don't remember their names. Uh, it only recently got revealed to me because I've been trying to uh, not learn about things like that because there is a good chance that uh, I may not be able to buy this one. We'll see. Um, I'm really, really hoping that things turn around for me on my channel and I could potentially buy the next uh, Pokemon game, but... Uh, as of right now, Gen 9 is it squarely in that space of I'm not going to like them. And that that even goes with uh, some of the Pokemon that are introduced in each one of these. And if you're very aware of it, uh, the ones that I like all the way up to uh, Gen 6 are also the ones we got new Eevee evolutions, which I found funny. When I realized that, I was like, really? So the generations that introduce a new Eevee evolution are the ones that I like. The ones that didn't, I don't like. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of odd. But anyway, uh, let's choose a starter and get into some Pixelmon. That is, you know, a brief history of me and Pokemon. And a little bit of backstory, considering that these guys are all things that I absolutely love. Uh, some of the others we do, too. Like I. I really like ninjas. What guy doesn't? Uh, but anyway, uh, starter types. I think I am going to stay with my whole fire theme. But right now, I'm not really sure which... I'm not really sure which one to go for. Um... You know what, we're just going to do Charmander anyway, because once we get it up to Charizard, that's going to unlock the ability to fly around the world for us on a Pokemon's back. So we are going to start with Charizard, or Charmander, excuse me. Oh gosh, lag. It's booting up for the first time. Uh, this is a special pack of Pixelmon from King Tuthmosis, one of my favorite streamers over on Twitch. Oh, do we have max battle raids? I don't have a boat. I am, like, on an island here. Oh. Wow, the controls are overly sensitive right now. Yeah, let's go check out that real quick. And then I'll get back to you guys. I, I really want to see what this is. You know what? I'm going to get this tree and uh, I'll be right back. We're, we're going to go off and uh, do some exploring, and then I'll come back to you guys. Bye for now. All right, so we've done a little bit of exploring, which has brought me to not terribly far from uh, where we started. Uh, we've got a swamp over here. That's going to be perfect for finding a Froakie. Uh, it looks like there's a stone beach over there. I don't remember what it is that I want from there. Uh, there's some mountains off in that direction, but more importantly, we have a birch forest. Now, if you don't know, in Pixelmon, uh, Pokemon spawn in specific biomes. And depending on the biome you are in, depends on the Pokemon that spawn there. And one of my favorites is Eevee. And Eevee spawns in a birch forest. So we're going to set up shop here because, like I said, we've got a swamp right over there. There's some mountains back there. This is a great location for freezing up. I don't know why that just happened. Uh, but yeah, this is a perfect location. So I think I'm going to plop my bed right there and uh, get on to building a small base and uh, possibly go mining a little bit because we definitely need tools. Uh, this is a much bigger mod pack than most Pixelmon ones. There's a lot of utility stuff in this and there's a lot of automation stuff in this. And as you can tell from our inventory, we have different types of food. Uh, 
Pam's Harvest Craft is in this, so that's interesting. That means there's a few options for food, and as you can tell, we do have our hunger bar dropping. So food is going to be important just, at, just as much as if I was in, you know, a normal Minecraft world. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, spend a little bit of time getting a base set up right here. This is probably the best location I could have found. Yeah, I'll get back. I'll get back to you guys. Well now, this is a surprise. This is very early game to see a legendary. Uh, I don't have any Pokeballs, and I don't have anything strong enough to take it on. And what the heck was that? Are you kidding me? Are you absolutely kidding me right now? <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> um, I think that's a boss. This appears a regular legendary. But, uh, yeah, there's nothing I can do about that right now. There's no way for me to catch that. It's too early in the game. I don't have any Pokeballs of any type. I've been out here looking for surface iron and uh, aluminum so that I can make potentially Pokeballs, maybe something else. I'm not really sure. It's too early in the game and uh, I really need to wait here for night, but I can't. <laughs> this is just funny. It's too early in the game for him to have spawned and uh, who wants to take up a bet now that we're Probably not going to see it ever again. <laughs> uh, let me get back to it, guys, and then I'll catch you later. Okay, so we got a few things melting up, and I've got a little bit more over in the chest. I thought it was in my inventory. Let me grab that real quick. I'm going to grab that. Uh, I don't know what to do with this copper. They've got some uh, mods in here that I'm not familiar with. Anyway, while we wait for things to smelt up, uh, I kind of crossed my mind that, you know, nobody really knows anything about me in Pokemon, and, you know, I don't know anything about you guys out there. So feel free to comment on these lists that we are going to talk about. The first one is, what is my favorite type? And what is my least favorite type? And we're going to do the top three. So my favorite type of all is definitely fire. Yeah, if that wasn't apparent from my choice of starters in each generation, fire is my go-to. And I think if I had to, I would probably most likely be a fire trainer. Now, my second favorite, we kind of need to cover a little bit of information. Let's start off with Gen 1. So in Gen 1, dragons were barely there. But what was there in the form of Dragonite was kind of a force to be reckoned with. Uh, there was no real way to deal a lot of damage to it unless you had a Pokemon with an Ice-type move. That was really the only way to deal with it. Uh, even Electric types could work on it, but that's not the main thing we're talking about here. Dragons started off as really, really powerful, being barely any kind of weakness at all. They got to the point where, ooh, a battle. <laughs> Let's get out of this. He's a little bit too strong. Okay, we're back. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, but dragons got to a point where they really needed to do something about it, and that's where we get my second favorite type, and this is more because of typing, not what you guys are thinking, Fairy. Fairy has become one of my go-to uh, team members for just about any situation. So yeah, I almost always have a Fairy type and a Fire type on my team. My third favorite is kind of along the lines of the same thing. In Gen 1, uh, Psychic types were really a problem. Uh, in fact, if you didn't have certain moves, you couldn't really deal with psychic types. They really would just steamroll you. 
And come Gen 2, they solved that problem by introducing the Dark Type. Dark Type is absolutely one of my favorites, though it is one of those that it, it, it's either on my team or I have one in waiting specifically to deal with a specific problem. Uh, it's not necessarily a Pokemon type that I always have, though you can guarantee I have at least one other Pokemon with a Dark type move on it guaranteed, specifically to deal with Psychics. Now, on the bottom, on the opposite end of this list, my three most hated types. Um, at the very bottom of the list is Fighting. Yeah, Fighting. Uh... I'm not a fan of the fighting type. I think that's probably the weakest type in the entire game, which is odd considering bug types exist, <laughs> and bug types really are the weakest. But yeah, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of fighting types, and I don't know why they keep throwing them into gyms, uh, as I discovered last night with Sword and Shield, uh, just one psychic type and you just steamroll straight through them. Uh, I didn't even try, it just kind of happened. But yeah, that's at the very bottom of my list, fighting type. Next up is ground type. I'm not a fan of ground at all. Ground to me is just one of those types that is just unnecessary. There's no real rhyme or reason to it, and it kind of just... Uh, it just doesn't do anything for me. I do not like the ground type at all, or any of the Pokemon associated with the ground type. Yeah, not a big fan of it. We're going to leave it at that. Uh, and close to that, at number three on the bottom of my list, is rock type. Yeah, I don't like rock. Uh, really, it's more because, you know, I almost always have either a water type or a steel type of some sort on my team. So, rock is just kind of useless, and having a rock type on your team is almost pointless, because there's almost always a water gem in every single game. That is one of the most common gem types in all the games. So, having a rock type is kind of pointless. Uh, yeah, I, I never see a real purpose in having a rock type on the team now unlike the other two there are a few rock types that i absolutely love uh, namely lichen rock i absolutely love lichen rock it's a great pokemon looks amazing uh, and then there's a few others that i can't think of off the top of my head with this list but yeah rock is it's generally not something you're going to see me using uh, if i have one on my team it's probably because it's one of the few that i like which is very, very few. But yeah, that's my list. Uh, what's your favorite three types? And uh, what three types do you like the least? Leave that in the comments below. Let me know. And uh, we may end up doing another list. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're going to go ahead and do that. Give me a second. All right, continuing on with this list of favorite things, we're going to cover my favorite Pokemon in every single type. And we're going to start off with Bug. Now, this is not really necessarily because it's a Bug type, it's more because of what it evolves into, but my favorite Bug has got to be Sizer. I absolutely love Sizer, more so because it becomes Sizer. We'll get to him. Next up, Dark type. What is my favorite Dark type? Uh, you may think it is Umbreon, because I am a big Eevee fan, and you would be partially correct. I absolutely love Umbreon, but he is not my favorite Dark type. My favorite Dark type is one that I very rarely actually use, but I absolutely love that little guy, and that is Absol. I love Absol. Next up, we got Dragon. Uh, most of the dragons, in my opinion, aren't really dragons. Yeah, uh, so my favorite dragon. My favorite dragon. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's a little more difficult. 
I don't really have a favorite dragon. Let's leave it at that. I don't have a favorite one. Uh, if I did, it'd probably be uh, the uh, uh, oh, what's it called? Uh, Hydrion. Yeah, whatever the triple head thing is. I can't think of the name. Okay, next up is electric. What is my favorite electric? Well, uh, Jolteon is definitely up there on my favorites list. Uh, I absolutely love Jolteon. It's one of the few EV evolutions that you're guaranteed to see on my team. So let's just leave it at that. My favorite is going to be Jolteon. And let's flip this out. We may end up actually running out of stuff to smelt during this. So fairy type, what is my favorite fairy? Okay, so that should be fairly obvious. My favorite fairy is definitely Sylveon, especially shiny Sylveon. Next up, fighting type. What is my favorite fighting? Now, I did say that fighting is probably my least favorite type of all of them, but I do have one particular fighting type that I absolutely love, and it does occasionally grace my team, and that is, of course, Lucario. Who doesn't love Lucario? Yes, Lucario is my absolute favorite. And uh, let's see if we can go ahead and... Yep, we can. Now, next up on the list is fire type. Let's get back up on the bed and do this. What is my favorite fire type? Uh, you may at first think, oh, he's an Eevee fan. He loves Flareon. Uh, no, actually, that's the one Eevee evolution you will probably never see on my team. I do not like Flareon. Uh, it's not because of how it looks. It's more because of its uh, move pull. Its move pull is atrocious, and uh, I don't use it. But my favorite fire type, you may also think, it's uh, Charmander and Charizard. Well, uh, I it is my go-to as far as fire starters, but my favorite fire type is actually Infernape. I absolutely love Infernape, and a close second to that would probably be... Uh, I was hoping there was one over here. Uh, Rapidash. I absolutely love Rapidash. It's a great one. Uh, my favorite flying type. Flying type. Hmm. My favorite flying type. Yeah, it's probably Rokadi and... Uh, Uh, that line. I can't think of what that line is called. But yeah, it's probably that. Uh, ghost type. What is my favorite ghost? This is kind of an odd one. Because, you know, ghosts are kind of in short supply. They're going the way of the original dragons. They have the least amount out there, I believe. I think so, yeah. Uh, so my favorite ghost type is kind of an odd bod. I am a big fan of Misdrevious. I don't know why, but that is my favorite ghost. So next up on our list is grass types. My favorite grass type. Uh, uh, I don't really use grass. <laughs> I'd never see a point in using grass. Um, let's just go with Turtwig. Yeah, we're just going to go with Turtwig because grass I'm not a big fan of. Ground type is up next. Um, I can't even name a single ground type. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't like ground, so we're just going to skip that one. I don't have a favorite ground type at all. Ice types. Ice. Uh, yeah, this is going to be fairly obvious. My favorite ice type is definitely Glaceon. Yeah, hands down, I love Glaceon. Uh, though Mr. Rhyme was an interesting addition to the game. Uh, I do love Mr. Grime. I actually used that for a little while in uh, Sword and Shield. Uh, Mr. Grime's, Mr. Rhyme is actually a pretty good one. Okay, normal type. Uh, that should be obvious. It's Eevee. Without question, it's Eevee. Poison type. Okay, poison. This one may throw some of you guys for a loop. My favorite poison goes back all the way to Gen 1 with my ace. And he has been my ace in every game that I can have him as humanly possible, though he did get nerfed quite a 
bit, so he was no longer my ace, but I'm almost guaranteed to have one. Whether or not it's on my team, maybe, maybe not. And that is Nitto King. I absolutely love Nitto King. It is my favorite. That is actually the very first Pokemon I cleared the entire Elite Four with solo. I love Nitto King. It is amazing. And my phone has locked out. Okay. Uh, psychic type. What is my favorite psychic? Uh, this is one of those odd bod ones. You may think it's Espeon, and you'd be partially right. I do love Espeon. It is another EV evolution, but it is not my favorite psychic type. My favorite psychic type actually comes in the form of Glade. I love Glade. It is such an awesome Pokemon. Uh, it's got kind of a weird looking design, but I do like it overall. It is hands down my favorite psychic type in the entire game. Now, next up, I don't remember the list. My phone closed out again. Uh, rock type. What is my favorite rock? Well, I mean, we kind of talked about that already. Uh, my favorite rock is definitely Lycan Rock. I really like that Pokemon. Uh, again, that's not a type that you're ever going to see on my team. Steel type. What is my favorite steel type? Well, we already kind of covered that with the first one and Bug. My favorite steel type is definitely Sizer. I absolutely love Sizer. It is amazing and is usually one like Glade that I have... Uh, back in storage for specific purposes. Mostly I use those two as my catchers, so I give them false swipe. That way I can catch Pokemon pretty easily. But yeah, that is my favorite steel type. Uh, water type. Hmm. Water. Uh, water is one of those that it's kind of a niche. I only use it when necessary, but I do have a couple of them that I absolutely love. And yes, Vaporeon is one of those. We're in another battle. Oh, let's just go ahead. That's a weak one. Ooh, Dragon Breath. Okay. Uh, let's get rid of Growl. No, I don't need that. Okay. Yeah. So, Water type. Uh, Vaporeon, I do always have one. It is not my favorite water type, though. My favorite, and we kind of covered that with the starters, my favorite water type in the entire game is definitely Greninja. I love a good Greninja. That is my absolute favorite. So uh, what's your favorite in all of the various types? And we've been out of stuff cooking for quite a while. <laughs> I just decided to keep going. But yeah, what's your favorite type within all the types? Or what's your favorite Pokemon within all the types? Leave your comments down below, and I'm going to get back to what I was doing and try to locate some things. Oh, and in fact, um, you kind of saw it. So the armband that is on this particular uh, skin, that actually is a mega band for mega evolutions that has been part of my skin for a very long time. But yeah, let's get back to it and see what we can get ourselves into. Okay, so we've gotten a little bit of work done while I was out mining and got a few things. But the thing that I'm most happy about is we've got 10 bricks here that I can use to make two bonsai plots. Now, these th bonsai pots... Let me get say that correctly. Now, these things don't really do anything by themselves other than just be decorative. However, these also have a whole other function, which is what we got these iron and chests for. So we're going to take these and turn these into hoppers, take them, and then put the bonsai on top. And now we've got a hopping bonsai pot. Now the thing about these is, these can take various different trees and produce uh, materials. Now they will produce sticks, leaves, saplings of whatever tree it is, and wood. Now we don't really need a whole lot of the saplings or the sticks, but uh, we do need more 
<clears throat> we do need more saplings for the uh, oak trees because they do serve a purpose that we will get into in a bit. And all you got to do is put them down on top of some chests and then they will start producing uh, materials for you, blocks and such. Now, in this particular case, because we're using drawers here, the spruce sapling is only going to produce spruce logs. And then the oak sapling, because of the way we got this set up, is only going to produce uh, oak wood and oak saplings. Now, like I said, we can use the saplings for a couple of different things. There are all sorts of little trees that come in this, uh, including food trees. But for now, this is going to help us get at least a little bit of material so we can build up a base and everything. And all we got to do is just set those and basically just forget them. And as you can see, these are starting to produce a little bit, and that one just did. Now, I already put some logs in there, but if we just stay here for a second and just kind of wait, we will see that these begin growing and growing and growing. And as soon as they're full grown, they will uh, drop their items into the bonsai plots, which then go into these drawers here. And let's just go ahead and look at this one. We got 72 right there, and you just saw we got another one that's 73. Over here, we should see the similar thing happen. Yeah, we got one more oak log. So that is a, a good thing. We got some passive blocks being created for us. I do have another storage drawer right here. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to use that one for yet, but these are the main things I was after. We really need the uh, spruce logs in order to kind of build up our starter house. And then the oak logs we're mostly going to use for charcoal so that we can do all the smelting we need to. Now, the next thing I need to start working on in order to make pokeballs is we need to get a, a little bit of ore doubling going on. And there's a couple of different ways we can do or doubling. Now, unfortunately, this version of Ender.io is the more difficult one. So we got to start off with the simple stuff in order to build up to the normal ones, which are much better, in order to build up into the advanced stuff. Uh, it is a giant pain in the butt. I have worked with this mod, this set of mod packs before. I believe in like King's Season 2 or Season 3 server I was part of it. Uh, that is why I do have access to his version of Pixelmon. So it is heavy on the resources, like trying to get some of these things going so that you can automatically produce things and then produce more stuff. It's, it's a little bit difficult seeing as this is supposed to be a quality of life improvement for playing Pixelmon. Uh, yeah, that's just something we're going to have to deal with, and it does look like I need to go and plant a few more uh, apricorns. And I do have some growing, and I actually messed up. I always think it's yellow for some reason, but it's actually white that I need. Specifically, we are going to be making uh, the luxury balls. That is kind of a personal thing, like I always go with lu luxury balls. I don't know why it wouldn't let me plant just then. But yeah, we are going to continue on with this, hopefully get some ore doubling so that we can actually make some Pokeballs and hopefully get some better food going. Because right now we just, the, this is all the food that we've got and it is kind of bad. It's not really producing a whole lot right now. So yeah, let me get on with that and then I'll check back in with you guys uh, later. And yeah, somewhere around here we had another legendary spawn. I don't know where it is. I didn't actually see it. And if I pull up the chat, you can see that uh, the spirit spawned. It must have been over on that side of the river because it does say birch forest on it. But yeah, let me get back to it and I'll check in later with you guys. Wait, hold up. What's going on here? So I've done this twice now with these 18 stacks and we haven't gotten one single piece of flint. Let's, let's do this again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 
12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That's three times in a row. Not one single piece of flint. Uh, it's just a normal shovel. It doesn't have silk touch. What's going on? Hang on. There we go. I saw it. So three times in a row, we got the full stack. And we finally got enough. Wow, that was... That's some terrible luck right there when you're looking for flint. If you just want gravel, I guess that was really... Oh, hi. <laughs> you, you've interrupted me. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> <laughs> it's to be expected in a Pixelmon world when you don't have a house. Uh, yeah, let me get back to it. I finally got what I was after. Uh, we've got the Sterling Generator, the simple one, made. I am working on making the Sag Mill as we speak. Actually, let's just go ahead. Uh, let's just go ahead and do this. Let's see. I don't have enough sticks. I don't have enough sticks. How do I not have enough sticks? Yeah, I need two of those. Uh, put stuff around. Okay, we got sticks. Click on this. Click on this. We need... Oh, it's cobble. Oops. I could have sworn that said stone earlier. But it's definitely cobble. So I need two of these. I need a couple of those, one of these, and three of these, because this does need a piston as well, apparently. I didn't realize that. I should have made two earlier when I made the first one. Okay. And boom, sag mill. We just set this right beside it and it should start powering it up. This has got some coal in it. And we can uh, now do a bit of ore doubling. I'm not really sure. I don't have I don't have any ores left to do that with. But we got what we were after. So let me go grab some more iron if I can find any, or maybe some aluminum, some bauxite, and uh, we'll, we'll try and get this ore doubling working. Uh, I'm not really sure if it's going to work with the simple one. I don't remember, and it doesn't show it in the, the GUI. So yeah, let me get back to it. I'll come back to you guys. Welcome back. And we have gotten a little bit of stuff done, and you know, just got some general uh, beginner things going on. I do have a couple of farms going on and a few uh, food items we are collecting over here. We got pears and apples being grown for us, so we're not going to have to worry about starving to death. And then way over there, we've got wheat, carrots, and potatoes growing. And we do have a couple of ground traps over there so that we can get meat fairly easy. Because it is early game, trying to beat a whole bunch of Pokemon is going to prove to be a little bit difficult. And speaking of which, as you can probably see, our Charmander has become Charmeleon. So, yeah, that is perfect. We've already gotten one evolved, but uh, I feel like I need some more Pokemon. Uh, fire has a problem with water, and as you can see, there's quite a bit of water around. Uh, we haven't had much problems with the uh, water types just yet, but uh, we do need to do something about that. So I need to go off looking for an electric type or possibly a ground type to cover me for now. Uh, we did encounter a bay leaf. Oh. <laughs> Figures. Uh... Hang on a second. <laughs> this is gonna be a problem 
throughout all of this. <laughs> okay, we got it beat. <laughs> all right, yeah. We did encounter a bay leaf. Uh, unfortunately, it kind of killed itself, so I wasn't able to capture it. Uh, we did manage to get a few luxury balls. I actually had 18, but after the first failed attempt, that's when the bay leaf, you know, killed itself. So we weren't able to catch that, unfortunately. So, yeah, that's probably what I'm going to do for the next episode, is we are going to go around and hopefully catch a few Pokemon. Uh, I do need to get some more balls made, but uh, we... We really need to get an auto hammer made. This is just painful, and our hammer is already almost dead. So, yeah. And speaking of dead, um, yeah, that happened. So, down there, there's a few lava pools, and there's water running to them. And as I was trying to make my way through there and collect up some fire shards for a fire stone, uh, we got into a battle. And because of that battle, we got pushed by the water into the lava and sank all the way down into the lava. And I couldn't get out of the battle fast enough. Uh, we did lose all of those items, including the few fire shards that I had at the time. So, yeah, I don't know why they've got death enabled in this particular Pixelmon pack. But, uh, yeah, that is a concern that we have to deal with. Yeah, let me get on to it, and I will see you guys in the next episode. This is going to be a little bit short because I am pressed for time to, you know, try and cover me for the next couple of weeks as far as videos coming out. So I do apologize about the length of them. Uh, and we, we're going to debate on whether or not we're going to continue this because this is just coverage videos that we're making. If I get enough... Uh, if I get a big enough response and replies to this video and... The following ones that I'm about to make. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll try and do, uh, I don't know, maybe a short little episode of Pixelmon every week. Uh, for now, I'm thinking about publishing this on Tuesday, so it's not confused with my regular series that comes out on Mondays. But in the future, if we decide to do this, I'll probably post Pixelmon episodes on Saturdays. Maybe. We'll see what happens. Uh, again, that just depends on the response that I get from you guys. So I hope you enjoyed. And if you really enjoyed it, please hit that like button. And if you absolutely love Pixelmon, you want to hear more about it, you want to enjoy the whole Pokemon world in a different view, think about subscribing. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!